Okay, well, I'm back working on the uh, parts for the uh, Rose Leanheart lathe. And last week I showed you that I'd made a quick Delrin piece that uh, as we were having some dimension issues. And so from that, the cheat numbers that I, that I had, uh, the correction numbers, however you want to put it, to make, make this model work, um, so I did all the layout. I think it'll show up there. This in the is camera. an import height gauge, digital, and I'm telling you, it's just a great little tool. I think uh, I've had it for a couple of years now. It's worked uh, really well, and uh, I think it was just over a hundred bucks. Really, really happy with it. And uh, if you guys don't have something like this, add it to the shop. And uh, we've got the holes drilled and the bottom hole here, which is this radius right here. And now I've got to cut these out. Didn't film any of the layout and stuff. I, I was chasing. It's been a week since the uh, I, I did this guy. And then it was like, well, what numbers did I use? I have to go back and figure it out again. So I was thinking too much and didn't want to deal with uh, filming. We'll bring you back, get a uh, little bit further on this. Next is just sawing the pieces out. Saw one side, get it all cleaned up in the mill. Then that side will be square, flip it over, saw it, and put it in the mill. And then take the center slot out. So nothing uh, too fantastic. So the paper in here was a shim to get the guides a couple thousandths apart, but you can see I still got a got some drift in the bandsaw that I'm having to deal with. So as long as I stay away from my line, I'm going to mill it anyway, so it's okay. It used to cut real straight. I've got to get some uh, time on this guy and get it cleaned up so it does cut straight again. Well, here's a little uh, in progress. Got good news and bad news. Good news is I got that dimension right. The bad news is I laid my layouts backwards, which I caught now, which is okay. It's salvageable, but I think you can see the edge of there is not there. The edge of there is not there. So these legs, which are going to be thin right here, the thin and thick thin and thick I had them back asswards so it's salvageable I don't have to scrap the part um, this side's completed it's correct now uh, it'll be correct once this line moves over and gets over here so I have the thicker leg and move everything over that's the I guess that's the good news that it's salvageable the bad news is is that I went ahead and put this hole in and this hole is off-centered by that same dimension. should be over here in this. At least I hadn't put this slot in yet. So this slot will move over, but my layout is going to be off by that distance. So good thing I didn't cut this. I almost cut, started cutting that um, when I had it set up in the mill. Um, so it's salvageable. Going to end up uh, putting a plug in here. Um, this is actually... Um, not really a necessary item. There, this this hole here and the hole that would have come through the bottom, uh, which would have been right here, well I guess it'll still be there, um, was for uh, dripping oil into the uh, unit. So I can correct that. I can even oversize this hole. Um, not that it really matters to anything and, and oversize the uh, hole here. So I'm glad I caught it. Didn't go too far. I just got to get my brain straight and get it correct and go back at it. The other thing that has to take place here um, is the, and I made a little, a little bushing here, is that I need to um, counter bore, and this is a representation of the counter bore right there. I need to be able to counter bore that distance, 560 thousandths. 
down about an eighth of an inch. Um, it's because of the existing bolts that this unit's going to use off of the uh, machine is a specialty thread. And so we're not going to go through the uh, hassle of trying to recut those threads. So I still have to counterbore this guy over here too, or down below, once I get everything else done, figure that one out. Here's just a quick shot. Dale wanted a uh, 560 thousandths recess, an eighth inch deep. And so what I've done is I'm just going in with a boring bar. And uh, seems to be working okay. Just feed it by hand. That boring bar is right around 560, the total uh, diameter, so it should work out well. Yeah, just checking with the gauge pin. Six, 601, good enough. Here's just a quick little shot of using one of uh, Stan Zinkowski's squares set up in the uh, mill. They work real good. So I drilled and tapped all of the mounting bolts so that way I can go ahead and use uh, mounting screws in the bolts there for holding uh, items. Great tool stand, thank you. So I have a small parallel sitting down inside the throat of the vise there where the valley is. Come up, touch stand square, give it a tighten, and ready to go. Okay, well, we're going to go a little handheld here. So here's a uh, Kennedy toolbox that my good friend Flea Market Dave gave me. And I used to keep it back by the Monarch. And in this bottom open compartment down there is where I stored all my chucks. And then I had my chuck keys and things in there. Well, we'll get back to that. This, this uh, bottom cabinet's being replaced. So the other day I ran on a seagull run. And here's the start of it. So as you can see, we got uh, lots of drill bits that uh, came in this seagull run. And that's not why I went on it. Um, some nice little things came in here also. There's a nice boring bar. Um, there's some really small collets for drills. Really tiny guys. Um, what else in here? We got... Uh, we got some uh, long shank drills, and we got drills, drills on drills, countersink, and then lots of uh, brand new drills in uh, from McMaster Car. Sweet. Well, that's cool. That that's not I went for the run. I'm gonna walk over here. So you're gonna see in the middle in a second that this guy. This is Diarco number 1A Bender, and uh, this unit was sitting on top of a toolbox that I'm going to show you in a minute, and uh, it was listed for 250 bucks. Well, I didn't even want the toolbox. All I wanted was the the Bender, and it's a 
It's a Diarco 1A. We got it mounted on a piece of wood here. And uh, I've been playing with it, just learning how to use it. I printed uh, Diarco's Art of Bending. And uh, as you can see, I have uh, something in here right now. Well, you can see this, uh, this hoop right here. Well, this right here. This... This used to be this. This was supposed to be this was supposed to be a replica of Tom Lipton's TIG torch holder. Well, when Tom saw it, he came, we happened to stop by the shop and he looked at it and he kind of held his collar up like he didn't know me or something. It was the best that I could do. Pretty poor though, but it worked. Hey, I'm not complaining. It worked. Well, one of the first things I did with my new bender was make a uh, new a la Tom Lipton TIG torch holder. So it turned out sweet. I'm happy with it. And uh, I'm just basically learning how to use the, the tool. Uh, it's sweet and uh, we'll get a lot of use out of it. But uh, let's uh, take a walk here. You, you can hang on handheld, right guys? Hang on. Hang on. Well, here's the mess that I've been machining back here. You saw some of that in this video. But back here, that bender was sitting on top of this cart from Grizzly five drawer cart. Well, what I'm really happy about this is I showed you that Kennedy box in the beginning. Well, to get the chucks out, I used to have to get on my hands and knees. And I'm an old bastard, so that's not simple. But uh, I had to get down real low to get those. Where now, the chucks are just in a nice drawer that roll out. Face plate. Got to clean that face plate up still. But, uh, Hey, this is working out sweet, and got chuck keys. My uh, six-jaw chuck won't fit in there, but I'll make a little cover for it and keep it up on top. So anywho, that was a uh, sweet uh, seagull run. Really happy. A little more handheld here. A little quick shout-out to my buddy Harold Waters, Redneck, Mach Redneck Machine Shop. He had sent me this package of uh, carbide inserts and uh, asked, you know, basically mentioned, hey, if they don't fit anything I have, hopefully they'll fit a tool you have. Well, there's one right there. Fits sweet on my tool and uh, it's a cutting dude. Really happy with it. Thanks a lot, Harold. Appreciate it. Some more handheld while I'm back here. Here's uh, some product I bought the other day. Uh, I can't remember if I showed this in my video or not, but we'll show it again if I didn't. My friend Carl had ordered some items from Banggood, and uh, he sent me the link. And uh, there's a threading insert. It's cut off. And a couple boring bars. And uh, I guess this is an internal threading, threading tool. Some nice, nice tooling there, and then uh, I actually uh, went ahead on his order. I picked up uh, more inserts that fit one of my other tools, and this set of uh, small boring bars. Sorry to turn you around there, guys. So, uh, you know, it's uh, one of those items... You don't always need everything, but boy, when you need it, it certainly is nice to have it. Look at this parking lot. <laughs> I think I got a little bit of a disease, huh? Yikes. It's just like uh, stuff just seems to be multiplying on top of this list of cabinet. Just a quick update. So this piece here, which uh, sits right here and it rocks, that's the earlier piece that I made on there. That's all completed, other than drilling some holes in it now. 
and then uh, this hinge pin right here I fooled around and made that this morning and uh, I have to give a shout out to Keith Fenner for uh, silver solder lessons that he does on his channel and uh, also this old Tony um, he's a fan of the straight neural I've had this straight neural tool for many many years and never used it until today and uh, it turned out real sweet so I got the hinge pin done left it long we'll cut it cut it to fit so a quick update where we're at on this uh, project here's another little snippet update what's happening here in the shop so I picked up a six foot long piece of uh, aluminum channel and this is uh, for uh, building a lift for Tim's room and uh, you can see in this drawing here I've uh, I've got a uh, section of the channel there and what we have is a two-part pin uh, that'll have a connection so that it can be undone and removed off the ceiling and you'll see what I'm going to tell you here in a second one inch shaft there's a housing that'll sit on top of the uh, aluminum bar here and then uh, the bottom of the shaft is held and in between there is a thrust bearing and it's a thrust bearing from uh, McMaster car uh, I think it holds like she's I don't know 5,000 pounds or something like that Tim's only a buck 30 at best um, and uh, I've got been working on some designs um, this is uh, this is one method here um, so this guy here there's my ceiling joist there's the pin this will be a piece of plate that's going to be bolted to the ceiling and then the pin the this whole uh, aluminum piece can rotate and then the trolley will be running on the on the uh, I-beam or whatever you want to call that piece of aluminum and then one idea is to have a counterbalance with a wheel on the back that would run on the plate and I've got another idea that I draw it do I have it here it is so uh, uh, well there it is so there's one idea there's the counterbalance wheel there's the swivel the trolley will run back and forth to uh, pick them up so the unit will swing and go in and out uh, a lot of pressure basically five foot to one foot back up on that wheel another idea my good buddy Carl came up with um, is uh, we go ahead and bend some pipe on the radius run some j-hooks and the end of the uh, I-beam here will be supported out on the edge and not have the upward force and basically there's the trolley setup so uh, working at this my only issue so far is finding some sort of electric lift to uh, lift them up and down um, I found uh, something from strong arm and uh, they make something that's to pull boats on trailers uh, I found another one uh, that's uh, 24 volt with batteries so I've still been working on those and the sizing and things but anyway uh, an upcoming project here's a little uh, update on the build this is Sunday afternoon. Um, I, uh, somewhere in this video, I'm talking about Timmy's lift. Uh, he's back in the hospital. We went in Friday, eight hours in ER, and he got checked in. And Sunday afternoon, I'm going to shut down and go get him. Uh, so my time's been limited, hence I haven't really been filming. I've been just trying to get stuff done. But anyway, uh, the rocker is pretty much completed here. Um, I still have to drill and put the uh, wheel here that'll roll. I haven't, uh, I haven't cut the, the rod yet. I don't really know how much you'd like to have sticking out here, whatever works on his machine. And then I have to build two more plates that uh, sandwich on this guy, on this side. Drill and put those in. But uh, all in all, uh, parts are turning out well. And... Uh, been having uh, fun in the shop. It's been good. So this one still has a little cleanup. 
uh, before it leaves the uh, shop, but it's uh, it's getting there. And just so you know, my helper hasn't left my side. And he's been snoozing a lot, but he's been out here with me. Right, Howie? Hey. Ready to go? Okay. Oh, big stretch. All right, let's go.